The year was 1979. Disco music was losing its groove and gas prices were skyrocketing. With the release of Star Wars in 1977, movie studios were on the hunt for the next big space blockbuster. This year saw the release of many space-themed shows and movies, such as Star Trek The Motion Picture, Buck Rogers, The Black Hole, and Battlestar Galactica, all to varying degrees of success. One lesson that Hollywood had learned is that if summer blockbusters were here to stay, then tie-in merchandising, particularly toys, would have to be part of their strategy moving forward. With 1979's Alien, a space thriller about a crew hunted by a malevolent carnivorous creature, the studio was completely prepared to capitalize on another science fiction sensation. And this time, they'd have full control of toys and other ancillary merchandise. What could go wrong? Hello Plastic Addicts, my name's Brent, and welcome back to Plastic Recollections. Today we will be taking a look at the 1979 Kenner Alien toy and its history. When the movie Alien was released in 1979, it saw great commercial success with theatergoers. Fox, the studio that distributed Star Wars, had allowed director George Lucas to retain licensing rights in exchange for passing up a $500,000 director's fee. This turned out to be a very expensive mistake and it was one the studio wasn't about to make again. The problem, which seemed to have gone unnoticed by Fox executives, as well as toy makers at Kenner, was that Alien was not a family-friendly adventure film in the vein of Star Wars. It was a gripping, violent horror film that was R-rated and even had to be toned down to avoid an X rating, meaning that the demographic that would be most interested in a toy couldn't even see the movie without being accompanied by an adult and it was not exactly the kind of source material that retailers such as Toys R Us would embrace. But the biggest surprise to theater employees is the number of parents bringing young children to see Alien. Did you know that this was an R-rated movie when you brought him? Yes, we did. Are you sorry you brought him? Yes, <laughs> I am. The tone of Ridley Scott's film, albeit visually stunning and perfectly executed, featured terrifying depictions of an alien life cycle, involving an almost parasitic infestation that resulted in the eventual violent and bloody death of its human host. But this didn't deter Kenner. The crown jewel of their toy license was an 18-inch xenomorph, also sometimes known as the Big Chap. It featured an extending tongue activated by a button on the rear of the head, articulation in the arms, wrists, legs, and tail, a removable dome on the head, as well as glow-in-the-dark features. The articulation in the arms is similar to the construction that Kenner had previously used on their large size Star Wars action figure line with Darth Vader and Chewbacca. East used a kind of rubber band type connector to hold tension on the arms. Many of these have now degraded over time, and a great deal of the existing alien figures found now will have loose or completely detached arms. And as is common with any vintage toy, most small removable parts will have been lost in the sands of time. As the head dome was removable, finding one these days can be difficult. The same holds true for the center spike on the back of the figure as well. With this toy, Kenner certainly succeeded in capturing the likeness of H.R. Giger's design, which was only momentarily glimpsed in the movie itself. The idea of designing a toy based on H.R. Giger's work is also quite the odd choice. The initial concept for the alien was taken from Giger's book The Necronomicon, which featured many of the artist's works. Giger's self-dubbed biomechanical style combined features of both the human physique and mechanical imagery with very blatant sexual overtones. <laughs> this can be seen in much of the art design of the movie. An interesting facet of this art design is that much of it was initially intended to be used in a failed theatrical adaptation of Frank Herbert's book, Dune. Dan O'Banion, the screenwriter for Alien, introduced Ridley Scott to the concept art Giger had created for the abandoned Dune adaptation. Scott was instantly gripped by the imagery of Giger's art and brought him on board for production. Unlike with designing the toys for Star Wars, Kenner was given detailed pictures to aid in designing the Xenomorph toy ahead of time. The result 
is one of the most terrifying and screen-accurate toys that have been produced to date. Needless to say, Kenner was certainly challenged when it came to marketing, particularly because Fox insisted they keep the toy under wraps until the film was released on May 25th. Kenner's initial releases for the Alien license would include the 18-inch figure, as well as an Alien board game and a Super 8 movie viewer. Banking on the film's success, Kenner was set up to expand the line in 1980 with a three and three quarter figure line, but it was not to be. Yes, Alien was the box office hit Fox anticipated, grossing 62 million to become the ninth highest grossing film that year. But that interest did not translate into toy sales as these languished on shelves. Few children were interested in having this bizarre looking toy for a movie that most weren't allowed to see. To make matters worse, many parental groups became quite upset that such a disturbing toy would be marketed to children to begin with. This resulted in the figure's eventual recall by Kenner. The Super 8 film viewer and board game also failed to resonate in the marketplace and were soon relegated to discount bins. Kenner's planned action figure series for 1980 was discontinued before production, never to be released. One has to wonder what other toys Kenner might have attempted had the line been successful. Perhaps a play on the popular game Hungry Hungry Hippos, but with face huggers. Or maybe a game similar to Operation, where you attempt to keep the chestburster alien from smashing through the ribcage of John Hurt's character Kane. Maybe they would even recycle one of their previous Star Wars playsets for use with the three and three quarter figure line. We'll never know. Kenner would later revisit the Alien franchise in 1992 with their Aliens line which was a more stylized envisioning of the aliens and characters from James Cameron's 1986 sequel, Aliens. This line was quite successful for Kenner, and eventually tied in with their Predator line as well. Then, in 2013, toy company Super 7 revived the original Kenner designs from the abandoned 1979 line and released them with the adult collector in mind. Characters included Ellen Ripley, Ash, Dallas, Kane, and a three and three quarter inch xenomorph. As is typical with modern toys, most would receive later variation releases. With the initial wave, packaging and overall aesthetic of the figures is very faithful to the original Kenner concepts and looks stunning when displayed. While I'm not a huge fan of the reaction line as a whole, I do find these particular figures in the first wave to be quite well done. In the years since, we have seen numerous iterations of the alien character as it was depicted in Ridley Scott's movie, in both media as well as toys, but none will ever have the same legacy or be near as iconic or memorable as Kenner's original ill-fated 1979 figure. If you have enjoyed this video, please take the time to like, comment, and subscribe for more vintage toy content. And as always, see you next time on Plastic Recollections.